The first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. Over humanity! The fires of frustration and discord are burning in Let us city. not forget for a moment the toils and efforts that lie ahead. They say that those who forget their history are condemned to repeat it. This is the History Lessons Podcast with certified financial planning practitioner Patrick Huey, author of History Lessons for the Modern Investor and your guide to financial wisdom in the past, present, and future. You ready? Good. Let's get historical. Historical, indeed. This is the History Lessons Podcast for the week of September the 11th, 2023. Hashtag at HL, the number four TMI. If you're a modern investor seeking some historical perspective these days, you're not alone and you're in the right place. This week we'll be flipping burgers, going Broadway, and acting like a prince. But first, the news. Yeah, a light data week last week, and it's impossible not to obsess a little bit over what there was on offer to us. Fresh off the Labor Day cookout scene, I couldn't help but recap the services and non-services PMIs with visions of the grill dancing in my head. Strange, I know, but bear with me. The services sector in August was hotter than said grill on a scorching summer day, with the headline index hitting a six-month high. 13 out of 18 major industries were cooking or at least growing. Now, the flip side of that burger, as we've seen, is the manufacturing sector, which is contracted now for 10 straight months in a row. So the PMIs are diverging and supplying plenty of ingredients for uncertainty and economic growth. And speaking of ingredients, don't forget about the sour stuff, inflation. Despite those supply chains easing up a bit, inflation is still at the buffet table, helping itself to a portion of the goodies. And M2, a harbinger of inflation, ticked up again after falling for several months. As we wave goodbye to summer and the Labor Day holiday, we've got the two traditionally most difficult months of the year for stock markets ahead. It's like a rain cloud threatening to dampen the picnic. Stay cautious while still finding the time to celebrate the bounty we've all been given. Next up, we'll charge the Wayback Machine and head back in time for this week's history lesson. But first, this word. Interest rates are rising, and your annuity purchased in the last decade might not be keeping up, which means your financial plan may be falling behind. So if you own a deferred annuity, fixed, indexed, or variable worth more than $250,000, now is the time to review it and make sure it is doing all that it can for you and your financial plan. Let us help you keep your retirement on track. Introducing Victory Independent Planning. VIP turns complex financial matters into clear and confident solutions. So you can relax and enjoy retirement whenever it arrives. Get the annuity review kit now. This complimentary kit includes a variety of checklists, resources, and ebooks to review the fees, features, and flexibility, or lack thereof, in your current annuity contract. It will even help you assess your overall investment goals and the people who are offering you advice. Get the kit today, because you can't teach an old annuity new tricks. To learn how VIP can help you review your annuity, click on the link in the show notes or go to victoryindependentplanning.com slash annuity dash review. That's victoryindependentplanning.com slash annuity dash review. Sign up for peace of mind today. Alexa, charge the Wayback Machine and set it to 1789 AD. Charging way back machine. On September 11th, 1789, George Washington appointed the nation's first Secretary of the Treasury, Alexander Hamilton. Author of the bulk of the Federalist Papers and seeking to build a strong central government, Hamilton assumed the state's war debts and formed the Bank of the United States, retiring the new federal debt by putting tariffs on imports and instituting a tax on whiskey. It was definitely not the same old song and dance for this Treasury Secretary. Hamilton played a large part in what became the Federalist Party until the election of Thomas Jefferson as president in 1800. 
He returned to New York to practice law, but was gunned down in a duel with Jefferson's vice president, Aaron Burr. But everyone knows all that, thanks to the Broadway play, Hamilton. Let's explore investment lessons inspired by the songs from that Broadway show. My Shot. In the song My Shot, Hamilton is determined to seize every opportunity. People don't miss your shot because you don't have a plan in place. Nonstop. In Nonstop, Hamilton emphasizes the importance of never resting, always writing, and learning relentlessly. Yeah, let's do more of that for sure. Wait for it. In Wait For It, Aaron Burr sings about his patience and willingness to bide his time. Patience is still a virtue, especially when the world runs at a higher speed. The room where it happens. Aaron Burr longs to be in the room where it happens, where important decisions are made. So be informed and active in your search for information, but don't fall into the trap of the infinity pools of information, like the internet and social media, where nothing ever really happens. One last time, George Washington decides to step down, move on, and retire. Is it your time? How will you know? Burn. Eliza Hamilton sings about her husband's betrayal. Keeping our emotions in check and making rational choices can prevent those financial burns. Who lives, who dies, who tells your story? Hamilton reflects on his legacy in this emotional song. Reflect on yours. Consider what your financial legacy is and plan accordingly to leave a lasting impact. Or not. Remember, it's up to you. By drawing inspiration from these songs, investors can approach their financial journeys with a Hamiltonian spirit of determination, patience, continuous learning, and a focus on leaving a meaningful legacy. Now, take your shot. Wayback Machine Disengaged, returning to the year 2023. Finally this week, it is on to the mailbag. You've got mail. This week, the mailbag question came in through Substack, and Ron asked, with the huge run-up in tech shares, are we partying like it's 1999? Shout out to Prince, rest in peace. Well, to answer this, I need to don my virtual Raspberry Beret. And we'll rock this question using Prince's songs as a guide. So let's go crazy. No, I don't think we are totally delirious this time around. Back then, people were investing in anything with a dot com in its name. They were the proverbial thieves in the temple, right? Pets.com, yep. You could even deliver dog poo to someone you didn't like through a service called dogpoo.com. How do I know that? Let's move on. The point is that today's tech boom is a bit different. It's mostly about innovation in the AI sector, not just throwing a dot-com suffix on everything and hoping for the best. These are real companies with huge balance sheets. Seriously, there are some real diamonds and pearls making these plays. Unlike the dot-com era where you'd buy anything and hope it'd become a gem, today's companies have real revenue, real customers, and real products. Yes, this little red Corvette of change is moving quickly, and everyone wonders what happens when the ride stops and when doves cry. So make sure you have proper risk assessments and due diligence, and that you've learned from your past mistakes. So is this 1999 all over again? I don't think so. I think it's just a sign of the times. Well, my fellow historians, that's all for this week. Check out my book, History Lessons for the Modern Investor, it's available on Amazon.com. And be sure to do all the social stuff. Like this episode, share it, and follow us. All of those things. Remember, we're available on Substack, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. So pretty much wherever you want to listen or watch, you can do it. Keep sending me messages for the mailbag. I love to read them on the air. Until next week, when we'll take another rollicking romp through the past and make an investment in your financial future with history lessons for the modern investor. See you next week.